How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing well. Stomp, stomp. Woo, stomp, stomp, bubble ride. <laughs> I feel like I have to sing that everywhere I go. Now, are you at home or? I am at home, yes. I'm at home. I have a luxury of half an hour off. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm trying to set up my iTunes and set up my iPad that I bought myself for Christmas. Oh, there you go. That's a fun gift. Just in case I got some bad presents, I hooked myself up. <laughs> very smart, very smart. Mm-hmm. Of course, also wishing you a very happy new year. Thank you, and to you too, 2011, legs 11. Did you make Obviously. any resolutions? Um, to stop swearing or cursing, as you would say, so much on stage. Um, to eat more and have more fun. Yeah, most people were saying eat less and I need to eat more. <laughs> <laughs> you need to get stronger or yeah because i'm now i'm working so much i'm very naturally very thin and i don't want to be a size zero so i have to make sure i'm stocking up on the carbs yeah and, and keep those uh keep those pipes here healthy yes yeah very and a bum that. always sells more records <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> all the success is really building for you i mean um the new single is coming out very soon right price tag yes Price tag, I can't wait. I'm so excited. The video is coming out soon too, which is very different to do it like a dude. So how is it feeling? Because this is a long time coming for you. I mean, you've gone through the motions of a deal, no deal, all of this stuff that was happening to you. And now finally, it seems all systems are go. How does that feel? I mean, um, it's very overwhelming. I mean, you spend years and years preparing, but you can never really prepare to kind of be a celebrity, you kind of you don't go to like, you know, being in the top ten only on download school, or you kind of just. I feel so humbled and like, you kind of you do it behind the scenes for so long, and you kind of build a team that really believe and kind of go, yeah, it's going to happen. But then when you have the public and people that genuinely let your career become your reality, you know, you let your dreams become true. Like it's so I can't after winning the Brit, and it's just, oh, I just feel so, like, and I'm ready to take the flag around the world and go on the plane and rep for the UK. Yeah, very good. So I believe the title track of the album is really about the struggle, right? And sort of the yes. the, 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 mm-hmm. the energy and, and what it took and what you've learned. Yeah, Who You Are is um, the album title track, and I basically wrote it about about a year ago maybe just over a year ago and I was in Hollywood and I'd been living there for three months by myself in a place called Oakwood I don't know if you know it like little apartments and I had no car and um I kind of was at a point where I'd had I'd been signed for almost like four years five years then and I think a lot of people kind of just think I just kind of came about and was like five minutes overnight success but I've been doing this for a long time and I think however strong you are and however much you know you are a role model and you have to be positive, sometimes things get tough and sometimes, you know, I'm only 22 now, so like, I was just turned 21 and I was by myself and I just kind of felt like I didn't know who I was, that I kind of lost my reason for why I do what I did, if that makes sense, and kind of was being thrown around to like three studios a day and it's like therapy, when you go into the studio you have to open yourself up and sometimes you forget to close yourself back up before you go into the real world. And I think I just got to a point where I really had to question why I did what I do and why I was in the music industry because there's a lot of fake people around me and not everyone is lovely and not everyone supports you and sometimes when you haven't got your mum or your sisters or your best mates to kind of have a talk with, you kind of lose your your senses for a minute. And um, yeah, I kind of got to a point where I was like, I can't do this anymore. I have to, I have to have a break. I can't, I wasn't happy. I'm very much someone that believes that you know, a lot of young people think, oh, celebrity, fame, success, it's the life. But it doesn't matter as long as you're happy. And I kind of was at a point where I was like, I'm really unhappy. And and I wanted to, instead of giving up, I wanted to write a song for myself and my fans that would keep me going. And I went into the studio of Toby Gad and said to him, I've got a lyric of don't lose who you are in the blur of the stars. And I really want to base a song around don't ever change or edit who you are to fit the purpose of other people and you know even things like the, like the lyric I nearly left the real me on the shelf like that was my way of saying that my label wanted me to be someone I didn't want to be and they nearly let like me Jessica Cornish Jesse J whatever you want to call me on the shelf and put out someone that I wasn't and I'm so glad that I kept at it and that song really did save my musical life if that makes sense it saved my belief in you know 
being an artist and knowing that I can do what I want to do and and now I feel like it's saving other people so I felt I felt it was perfect to be the album title yeah and I'm I'm really happy that it's like leading through to to the whole world now and I just I'm I'm, I'm so excited about that song being released well, it's a beautiful track, and you sound amazing on it. And I think, yeah, what, you, what you're saying is the story behind it is helping and inspiring a lot of people, like a lyric, like, it's okay not to be okay. Yeah, exactly. It's okay to cry sometimes and feel really swollen and look like, you know, and just puffy and a mess and sit in your pajamas and go, I'd hate this and I don't want to do it. Sometimes it's good to let it out. And I think I wanted to write a song that when you're feeling like that, anyone in the world can put it on for three minutes, have a cry, and then it's done, and you can yeah. go, right, I'm ready to step back into the world. Yeah. So who you are, so who are you? So who, who <laughs> Jesse J, I mean, what do you want the world to know about you? Um, I'm, I'm a pretty normal chick. Um, I'm pretty, I am what I am. I'm very honest. I don't think before I speak. Um, I've had a very normal upbringing. Um, I love music. I love... I love having fun. I'm only 22. Um, I've got a very Cockney accent. Um, I'm from Essex in London. Um, and I just kind of want to be myself. I'm, I, some people will hate it. Some people will love it. And I'm very real. I'm very like, I don't want to ever let my music have any boundaries or any, any limits. I kind of, I'm, I'm, I believe that I was put in this industry to take risks. And I'm very much aware that I want to be a, I'm a, I'm a role model and I'm very, I'm ready to live up to that. And, um, I want to do more than just music. I want to be able to establish myself, you know, as an ambassador to kind of dedicate my life to saving other people through what I can do. Um, and I suppose that I'm just kind of ready to be artist slash therapist slash head of charities slash going to schools and talking to young people that don't feel like they have a purpose or they belong because I've been there. You know, when I was younger and I was I had a heart problem and I was on beta blockers and my skin was like slightly green and I had massive teeth and no one understood me and like you kind of you need these people to understand that like it, you know it, it it does get better it kind of it does um I think my music just speaks volumes and I suppose that yeah. people say to me like who are you and I say listen to my music because I, I don't edit anything I will be very open and very honest about what I've done and I will expose my flaws as well as my positive kind of aspects and I think that's one thing that I think you don't get very often anymore that I think people are scared to kind of go I'm not perfect and I'm definitely not perfect so I am all ready to show the world <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, yeah. I mean, people relate to that because they're, they're yeah, looking for people that are like them and also what I love about you is that it's your your voice and your lyrics that do the work it's not any type of gimmick it's yeah. all you it's... I mean, people, I remember when I first put my YouTube video up, I was in um, Oakwood again, and um, I'd been signed for four years, my, my deal had fallen through, and I was then signed to the US, and I'd, I'd had an album ready all, like in the past when I was 17, and I kind of, I put the YouTube video up in a bathroom, and I was kind of just wanting to sing, and my label were like, don't put any videos up, and I was like, no, I want to, and a lot of people thought that was my gimmick, and I was like, so funny, but... Just being yourself, people think it's a gimmick, but I genuinely just miss singing, and it was the closest thing that I had to a gig, like just putting a song on YouTube. I was like, there's no audience, but there will be one. I just won't see them watching. But, um, yeah, I kind of, I am very, very, like, involved in what I do, and, like, I don't want that to ever change because if someone sang my songs and wrote my songs and did my BBs and did my hair and makeup and dressed me every day, I'd feel like a dummy or a clothes horse or a puppet. And yeah. I just don't think that's what I'm about, and um, I think I owe it to my mum and dad to be more than that. They bought me up better than to sell myself short, so, yeah. That's a great that's a great attitude. So a lot of people might not know, actually, that you're a very uh, talented songwriter as well. Well, one in particular is like one of the greatest pop songs of the last decade, <laughs> which I think is Party in the USA. That's what saying. Some, some mums would probably disagree. I've never heard it <laughs> a thousand times. <laughs> so Party in the USA you wrote, but you also wrote I Need This, which is on a Grammy-nominated album this year by Chris no, Brown. No, I can't believe it. Last year I went as a guest of Jamie Foxx, whose manager got me a ticket, and I sat by myself, I, like six rows away from my label, and I was like, hi, remember me? Um, <laughs> And this year I'm actually, you know, been invited as a nominee. So it's like, that's, yeah, you've got to make your dreams a reality. You've got to work hard. And it's so nice to be giving something and getting something back. And I love that song. 
I yeah, think that's a great song. Yeah. So, what do you think makes a good pop song? Um, honesty and delivery. I always people always say to me, "Do you write lyrics or melody first? I do it at the same time. If if a piece of music or like, I think it's the way you sing it. I think. I don't know, part in the USA, it had to be like, I have to play at LA, it's very like catchy and quick and it's cool and it's fun. And it's like, I need this, is more like, stop, where am I? It's like sparse and a bit unsure, like the way you deliver it. And I think that's, like, I remember when I was with Justin Timberlake and he said to me, what I love about your voice is that you sing like a rapper. Mm. And I suppose I've always been someone, my delivery is very, I can switch it up and kind of do different characters. And I think that for me, that's, not what makes a great pop song, but I think it helps kind of people to relate to it if you kind of deliver it in a real honest way. Yeah. Um, yeah. I kind of never really given myself kind of, I just, if something takes me, it takes me. I mean, believe me, I've written many a songs that people would definitely not ever buy and that would be deleted off my iTunes if I had the choice. But um, <laughs> you've got to write 10 to get one good one. And sometimes I don't have the time to write 10. So there's a bit of pressure there, but um I love writing, and it's my way of kind of my creative outlet. And um, but I've got to make sure that I keep the best ones for me. Right, exactly. <laughs> you better not give them away, <laughs> because you also really love to sing. That's what I get from you and your two your yes, videos. Yes, yes. You just oh, love to sing and build. I love to sing. I love singing. It's it's ever since I was a kid. My first words was jam hot. This is the boys from the big bad city. This is jam hot. And my sisters used to sing it to me constantly when I was little. And my first verse was jam hot. And then literally every video of me when I was a child, I, I'm just constantly singing. Like I don't talk. I just make noise and sing constantly. And I was very vocal as a child and always writing songs and poems and raps and always very vocal. And I suppose it's just in my blood. My mum always said to me, I know when you're unhappy because you don't sing. Ah. So if I was like, woo, yeah, it'd be like, she's in a really good mood. And if I was like, she knows something's up. So yeah, if I'm not singing, then I'm definitely unhappy. Can you do a little price tag for us? A little bit of price tag? Yeah. Okay. Seems like everybody's got a price. I wonder how they sleep at night. When the sale comes first and the truth comes second, just stop for a minute and smile. Why is everybody so serious, acting so damn mysterious? Got your shades on your eyes and your heels so high that you can't even have a good time. Come on, everybody look to their left. Everybody look to their right. Can you feel that? Yeah, we're paying with love tonight. It's not about the money, money, money. We don't need your money, money, money. We just want to make the world dance. Forget about the price tag. Yeah. Woo! Amazing. <laughs> Are we going to see you at the Grammys in LA? Mm -hmm, maybe. I mean, I, I have between the Grammys, there's one day, and then obviously it's the Brit Awards here. So yeah. I don't know if it's going to risk the jet lag but I, I will if I can but um I think if I'll be performing at the, in the, uh, the Brit Awards I may have to give it a miss but fingers crossed I can do both yeah well that'd be, be great. or hire a double but with a wig yeah. just to sit <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly no one will ever know no one will ever know <laughs> that should work that should work that's a good idea all right well, well Nice meeting you. Great to meet you as well. Uh, I wish you all the best. I believe in you. You are the oh, truth. Thank you. Well, it's nice meeting you. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you too. And bye -bye, maybe meet you soon. Thank you. Bye. Bye.